So if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, first off, thank you for your continued support. And secondly, you may also remember a few years ago, I did a video on EGR blanking. Uh, I'll put a link up here if you want to check that out. And that video has grown to be, hands down, the most popular video on my channel with over 100,000 views now. Uh, and if you'd have told me that was going to be the case back then, I just would not have believed you. That video took the least time to film and probably the least time to edit of all the videos on my channel. So what have I learned from this? Uh, maybe I need to start putting less effort into my videos. I don't know. But anyway, we're revisiting this job a few years later and removing some of those now redundant EGR parts from the engine bay. So basically what I want to do today is remove the EGR pipework over the top of the rocker cover. So that includes the EGR cooler. So I need to think about rerouting those coolant lines. Uh, I'm gonna need to make a couple of blanking plates, one for the exhaust manifold uh, and one for the EGR valve. I'm probably gonna leave the EGR valve in situ to be honest with you as it doesn't bother me too much and it's not really in the way where it is. Um, what else is there? Gaskets, I might need to make some gaskets but I'm hoping I can reuse the existing ones. We'll see. Right, so for those of you who do remember the old EGR blank video, you'll know that I installed my blanking plate between these two flanges here. So let's start where we left off and with these two 12 millimeter bolts out here, disconnecting this end of the pipe work from the EGR valve. One. Two. Okay, with those bolts out, I can now remove the blank plate and the gasket. Like so. I'm going to hang on to these because they might come in handy later. Okay, so that's the easiest end of the pipe work disconnected. The next section is a little trickier as it consists of the EGR cooler. So that's this device here. The purpose of this is pretty self-explanatory to take some of the heat out of the exhaust gas before it cycles back into the inlet. And it does this by circulating engine coolant through it. So that's what these two hoses are for here. I'm not 100% sure which way around it flows to be honest with you, but one is in and one is out obviously. Uh, so I think my easiest option here is going to be to totally remove this section of hose and then shorten this one and loop it back into the side of the cylinder head, effectively just shortening and closing that loop off. Um, I'm hoping not to lose too much coolant in the process. If I do, I may have to bleed the system after. Um, oh, and I am working on a cold engine, by the way, so there is no pressure in this system. So first up, I'm going to release the two coolant lines from this little bracket here. So just a 10 millimeter socket to get that off. Like that. Now I'm going to remove the end of this hose from the EGR cooler. Uh, so a pair of pliers to move the clamp. And then pull the hose off. Remove the pipe clip and hold on to that. I'm just gonna bung an M10 bolt in the end of here for now to stop anything else leaking out. Okay, so this is the hose that I need to shorten. So I'm just gonna try and eyeball it for length before I cut it. Something like that should be about right. So now I can cut it where I've marked it. Yes, I've lost my Stanley knife, not ideal. So that's the pipe taken care of. Now I need to trim back this heat shield. I'm going to have to be careful I don't nick the pipe when I do this. That'll do. Okay, so now I need to remove this whole section of hose here. So I'll start at the EGR cooler end. Same process as before. Move the clip and remove the hose. Hmm. 
no problem. Okay, the next bit coming up I want to do as quickly as possible to avoid too much air getting into the cooling system. So my plan is to remove this hose from the side of the cylinder head here and then quickly push this hose in its place. So I need to move the hose clamp off this hose before I start. The access is tight in here. You know what, I'm going to swap this for a Jubilee clip because I'm not going through this again. Okay, it's off. I was going to reuse this hose clamp, but considering how difficult that was to get off, I'm going to switch it out for a Jubilee clip. So I'll get that in position on there. Right, let's do this. One off, <laughs> one on. Nearly. That is not bad at all. Tighten it up. Grand job. Get that out of there. And I can also remove this little pipe bracket here because this is redundant now anyway. Took some doing but there we go. Okay, great. So that's the coolant pipes rerouted and taken care of. And I didn't lose too much coolant in the process. So I'm sure I'll get away without having to bleed the system, which is good news. Okay, so now that we've isolated the EGR cooler, this whole section of pipework can be removed from the engine bay. Uh, so there's four bolts left to remove. There's two on the side of the cylinder head down here and then two on the exhaust manifold back here. Now, as far as undoing bolts go, the only two that really concern me are these two back on the exhaust manifold because corrosion and heat cycles can often make these things pretty stubborn. I did give myself a little bit of a help earlier and sprayed them with some penetrating fluid, so all been well, we'll back them out, no issues. Let's find out. Okay, so 12 mil. One left. That's gone as well. So that's the worst two down. The last two on the side of the cylinder head should be pretty straightforward. Great, so that whole section of pipe work should just lift out. Like that. So there's a gasket back here. That's still in really good shape, so I can reuse that. That's good news. And I'm also going to just stuff a little bit of paper towel down the hole in the exhaust manifold here, just to prevent anything falling in there while we move on to the next step. So progress has been made and all this redundant EGR pipe work has now been removed from the engine bay. So before we go any further, here is why I believe EGR systems are bad. Look at that. All right, this is the kind of crap that your EGR system wants to recycle back through your engine. It doesn't make sense to me. All right, there is the emissions argument and I can get behind the emissions thing if it's not at the expense of engine reliability, which to me, this clearly is. I mean, what do you want going through your engine? Clean, filtered air, or this sludge right here? I know which I'm choosing all day long. Agree, disagree, <laughs> rant over, moving on. So lastly, the open ends need to be blanked off to prevent any leaks. So I'm gonna use one of the old gaskets as a template and make up some blanking plates, which I actually cheated and did the other day. So here we go.
okay I've got my blank plates and I can install these using the original bolts and gaskets because they're in really good shape so first up I'm gonna do the exhaust manifold and then do the EGR valve after so remove the paper towel obviously in fact before I install this plate I'm just gonna run over the mating surface with the Stanley knife because there's a bit of carbon buildup on there That's better. The blanking plate wasn't sitting flush before, uh, but it is now. Okay, gasket on. Blanking plate on top. And then two bolts. Okay, that's one down. Now the EGR valve. Awesome. Great, I'm super happy with that. That's one of those jobs that I've been wanting to get done for a long time, but other things have just kept getting in the way as they do. Um, the engine bay looks a lot tidier now and I have much better access to things that were previously hidden underneath that EGR pipework. And like I said in my first video, this vehicle is of the age where I don't have to worry about fault codes or engine management lights coming on as a result of doing this. If you're doing it to a more modern vehicle, there's a good chance that will be the case. But if you're struggling, head on over to the comments section of my first video because I know some guys have posted some tips and some workarounds. So check them out, that might help you out. With that said, that's another Tech Tip video in the books. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you want to see more of the same, I am trying to get these videos out every month. So subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. See you later.